In this video, I am going to be showing you how to use the advanced button block from Cadence. So we are going to be recreating some simple buttons just like I have done here. So in a new page, we are going to add the advanced button block. So we're either going to click on this button here or we are going to click on this toggle block inserter. So let's do this here. And what we'll either do is we will click on the search box, type in advanced button or click here because I have used this um, quite frequently. That's why it comes up here at the top. So we will click on that and you'll automatically notice that there is a little um, your typing icon kind of showing you to type in. So the first thing you're going to do is to type in whatever call to action you want to have on your button. So let's say, for example, we type in something like click now or let's rather do something like buy now and an exclamation mark. Okay. So then once we are in this, we can then see the advanced button styling options to the right hand side here. And the first option we have is button count. So if you would like more than one button in a row, you can simply just click add button. And then that is going to add a button right next to that first one. And you can click add button again, and then it adds a, another one. Now, if you add a couple of buttons and you actually realize you only need one, you just click on that last button and you click the remove button at the top here and you can do so with the other one here as well. OK, so you can click on this button and if you've styled it and you like the styling, you can just click duplicate button and then that will open the it will create a new button. You can also click on this button here to move it. So you simply click that and you can move it left or move it right. So if you've got a series of buttons and you want to move them around, you can do so. And you can also copy and paste styles. But let's just remove this one and start styling this one. So the next option you can see is your button alignment. So at the moment it is by default aligned center. I can also align it left and I can align it right. Again, you have your desktop option, your iPad option and your mobile option here. So you can click on your iPad option and you can style it center and then you can go to mobile and you can start it left or right or center whatever you need it to be styled. So then we'll click on the desktop option, we'll make it center again, and then we can go through our other options. So this next option is where you start styling your buttons. So what it looks like um, in terms of color, um, for sizing and also hover effects. So we'll click on that drop down. And the first option you have is to have the default button styling or your theme styling. So the default, you can then go through all these and start changing your styling or you can click on theme and then that is going to pull through the styling that is in your customizer. So if you go to appearance and you go to customize, then you click on colors and fonts. You'll then see an option for buttons and you click on buttons and I can start styling it here. It's really good to style your buttons in one place so that all you need to do on any page is just click on theme and then all your buttons look pretty similar throughout your whole website. I do like to do this on my clients' websites, um, keeping the buttons as uniform as possible. It just creates that kind of brand recognition and also the it creates trust as well. The browser instantly knows when they see a pink button like this, um, oh, that's a button, I can click on it and it's going to take me somewhere. So you can create, you can work with the styling here in the customizer, changing text colors, changing your background colors, your border colors, the border radius, the fonts, the padding and the shadows and the hover state shadows as well. So um, if I change border radius here, you'll start to see that the border radius changes on here because I have chosen the theme option for this specific button. So let's take that off. You can see how it changes there. Um, I can also change, say, for example, the font sizing. So I change that. And why this is also good is because if 
For example, I have created several different buttons on a page and throughout my website, but actually, or oh, my client doesn't like it or doesn't like this pink color, I can just come here and I can say, okay, let's rather change it to that color. And throughout my website, that is now going to change. I don't have to go into each separate page and start changing the color, which obviously takes time. So we can play around with, you know, these kind of settings. So I can reduce these. So as you can see, what is also changing is um, these ones down below. So I have chosen the theme option for this, but then I have gone below that and I have chosen specific font sizing and I have changed the, um, the background to be a gradient. So let's go back here. So this at the moment is set to the theme. Okay. So this will change in terms of font sizing, etc., according to the customizer. But then I can also go down and set specific things for that button. Alternatively, I can come to the default and then I can start styling it. So the next option is your button link. So you can either paste in a URL or you can come here and if you have created a page on your website, you can just type in the name of that page that will then pop up and you can click on that page. The other option you have is this little link settings option. And then that's where you can change your link target. So if you are linking outside your website, you want to send it to a new window. If you're linking within your website, obviously keep it in the same window. If it's a video, you can do a video pop-up. Then you've got some, uh, some other options in terms of no follow, sponsored and download links as well. Okay, so next option is your font sizing. So you can either use this scrolling, um, scrolling tab to change the font sizing and this is in pixels you can obviously change the unit if you want to other units and you can just work with this then you do have the um, options to look at it on an ipad or a mobile device as well so your tablet and your mobile then the next option is your button sizing so you can choose from standard button sizing so small medium or large or you can set your own by clicking on the cog icon and then adding in top and bottom padding and left and right padding. And this of course is within your button. So if I use this tab here, you can see it goes like that and goes like that. So that's within, remember padding is within inside something, margin is outside. Okay, so your next option is your button width. So auto means that it will be relative to the content that is inside your button. So if I decide to type in something a bit bigger, then it kind of extends the button. And the next option is fixed. So I can set a specific pixel width. So if I make it really small, then obviously this, the wording doesn't fit into my button anymore. Otherwise, I can make it bigger and then the content can all be on one line. Okay, I can always make that bigger by just typing in here. Okay, the biggest is 600 pixels. Okay, next option is your color settings. I'm just going to bring this font sizing down so we have kind of like that. The next option is your color settings. So I can change text color. I can choose from my global palette. Otherwise I can just pop in a hex code or I can use the color picker. Then the next option is your background type. So we can have a solid color or a gradient. So I used a gradient up here. Um, let's choose the background color. Uh, let's choose that. Okay. Then we've got our border color. So again, choosing from your, your great, your, global palette or your um, color picky here or hex code. Then you can have a box shadow. So back box shadow is something that I've done here. So if I click on this button, I can click box shadow that then adds a box shadow. So I might want to just increase that. There we go. And you can see that box shadow has come up. Um, and then you've got a little tab here, which says inset. So at the moment it's outside the box. If you want it inside the box, you just click inset. 
we now look at our border settings so you've got your border width so it, at the moment it's got a standard border here if you don't want a border you can just set it to zero otherwise you can obviously increase that or use this toggle here then you've got different border styles solid dashed dotted um, you've got ridge and you've got groove as well so you can try out different border styles if you would like and then you've got border radius is in terms of your rounded corners again you can toggle this as well then you've got your button margins so this is outside of your button how much spacing do you want above below to the right and to the left remember you can also use these to set how it looks on a tablet and on a mobile device then your last setting here is your icon settings so if you would like an icon you can simply click on this drop down um, and there's 81 different icons to choose from or 81 pages i think um, and you can just click through those so for example if you'd like a little arrow that will then go in there you can set the icon sizing um, and you can do icon color um, you can also show only the icon if you want and you've got icon padding so that's spacing around the pad uh, around the icon and then the icon location so if you want it to the left or to the right and then you can add custom css uh, custom css class if you want to start styling it differently now i'm going to scroll back up here because you may have noticed with the color settings there was a hover tab so if i click on that hover tab um this is when you put your when you hover over it you can see it kind of switches color this is where we set the hover text color and it's got exactly the same options as your normal so you've got your hover text color your background type uh, border color you can set border radius you can set border style etc um, and you can work with your icon settings as well icon also has and hover effect so i can change the hover color to maybe green or something else if you would like that to be a bit different then the next option here we have is gap between next and this is if you have two buttons so this will just be the spacing between the one button and the next button then we've got here the next drop down is your font family so i'm just going to close this tab here so it's your font family click on that we can then look at the letter spacing so that's the spacing between each letter the text transformation so we can capitalize it or uppercase or all lowercase and then we can select font family and as we know we can choose from all the google fonts and then font weight as well then container margin is the spacing around your button so top middle and um, top right bottom and left so i can say 10 20 10 and 20 so that's just your spacing around your button and then the last option you have with your advanced block is this advanced here and you can force your button to be full width um, and you can add in a additional css class and you can collapse it on mobile and once you are done with styling your button and styling your page you simply click update and then you can view your page and there is your button and that is the hover effect that we have created so that's um, how you use the advanced button block for cadence